it has been a while since I've done one of these, but here we go, people. My review for Wreck-It Ralph. Now, here's the thing, guys. I haven't seen this movie yet. I'm about to go see it right now, but the thing is, is that I have been looking forward to this movie since... I don't know. When did the first trailer come out? Was it, like, was it like in May or June or something like that? I've been looking forward to this movie for over like six months now. So, I mean, I'll be completely honest. This is probably the most excited that I've been for a movie since, I want to say, since the Lord of the Rings trilogy. This movie, just wow. I... I really hope that this movie ends up being awesome. I mean, I already know that it's going to be awesome. You've all seen the trailer. You've seen the trailer with the bad guy support group, and there's Bowser, Zangief, M. Bison, um, Satan from Ghouls and Goblins and stuff like that. I know that this movie is going to be cool, but the question is, is the movie going to be able to go from the references? I mean, the references are kind of cool and everything, but is it going to be able to go from the references... Or just use the references and then actually be able to tell a good story as well, you know? Well, I'm about to find out. I'll see you guys in a couple of hours. Okay, okay, whoa, 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 whoa. Wow. Okay, I'll be totally honest with you guys. I'll be totally and completely honest with you guys. I knew this movie was going to be good, but I was not expecting it to be that good. Let me break it down for you guys. I was expecting it to be, like, kind of around here, like, with it being references. References everywhere. The movie. That's kind of what I was expecting it to be. That's the level that I was kind of expecting it to be. I was expecting it to be, you know, it's, it's good, it's funny, and it has video game references, which is kind of cool. But it's, like, all the way up here, guys. This is, like, top... 10 favorite movies material. I am not even kidding you. Let's start the review. Now, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that this is going to be a spoiler-free review so that anybody can see it and I won't give anything away. Um, I'm probably going to have to take off a couple of takes in this review because I'm probably going to slip up with something. But I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that this is a spoiler-free review. So, just want to let you guys know that you should be okay. Just go ahead and keep watching this, please. So first off, let's talk about the obvious. Let's talk about the video game references, and boy, were there a lot of them in here. Now, the thing that I liked about this movie is that there were a lot of references. There was references to, like, Metal Gear Solid and Mario and Street Fighter and a couple of other classic arcade games. Like... Even in the beginning or whatever, when Wreck-It Ralph is talking about how his game's been around for 30 years, and he's been the bad guy for 30 years, again, talking in the bad guy support group or whatever, he's even talking about, like, yeah, asteroids, I don't know what's going on with them, the guys from Centipede, I have no idea what happened to them, kind of thing. That's pretty cool that they're referencing the actual actual arcade video games back in those days and everything like that. But the other cool thing that's awesome about this, uh, awesome about the references as well, is that usually when they're talking about a classic arcade game or something like that, I remember, I want to say there was at least like three or four times where they were talking about a certain classic arcade video game, and they showed footage of the actual game. Not edited, not... HD remixed it or 3D'd or anything else like that. It's like actual game footage. That's pretty freaking awesome in and of itself. But here's the thing when it comes to the references. Like I mentioned before I saw this movie was the fact that I knew that later into the movie they were, the movie was going to have to at some point get past the references. It couldn't just be the references or at least it shouldn't be, just the references, and it was going to have to transition into its own story and its own presentation of the original characters and everything else like that. And so that was what I was waiting for. I was waiting for, okay, when are the references going to stop and when are they actually going to start telling the movie? And it was totally successful. It was kind of weird, to be honest with you, because admittedly, the, um, the first half, I want to say, the first half or the first third of the movie is where most of the references are involved, and then when they start to tell the actual story between Wreck-It Ralph and him game jumping and everything else along those lines, that's usually when the references start to die off a little bit. Not completely, but they do tend to die off a little bit, but it works. You know what? It actually does work really, really well. The voice acting between all of the characters was fantastic, especially with the one girl that you've seen in the trailers. I'm not giving anything away because it was in the trailers, but the one girl that was there, Penelope, 
the thing with her is that it was um, it was it was obvious that her character was meant to be a little bit annoying, a, meant to be a little bit juvenile and everything like that. And when I first saw her, I was like, oh boy, is this going to be an annoying person that I can't stand or anything like that? And you know what? It is a little bit, but she pulls it off well. You know that she is a just meant to be like a juvenile child, and it actually pulls off pretty darn well. And you actually end up liking the character towards the end. So... It's, um, it, she's annoying, but the good kind of annoying, kind of like me. One of the things that I will mention about this movie, and again, not giving anything away, but the plot twists that they have in this movie, probably some of the best plot twists I have ever seen in any movie ever. And saying anything else other than that would probably give stuff away, so I'm just going to leave it at that. There's a there's a fantastic plot twist that's in there, and they do it really well. It feels smart. It feels... Anybody who has, like, a basic understanding of, like, um, uh, video game or computer programming or whatever are, is going to understand what's going on. And it's it, it just feels really smart. It isn't just like, oh, well, this guy does this, and as a result, blah, 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 and it doesn't make any sense whatsoever or whatever. It feels smart. It, it plays to your intelligence, and you're all like, oh, that's why he did that. And especially towards the end, there's another plot twist, and man, is it good. I'm not even kidding you. It is awesome. If there is only one criticism that I could give about this movie is that the time that they spend in that one uh, video game, Sugar Rush, which is kind of like a uh, Japanese candy sweetened kawaii uh, version of Mario Kart, is that they do spend a lot of time in that world. They spend a lot of time in that world. Not that there's anything wrong about that, but admittedly, when the movie was first starting up and everything, and uh, Ralph goes into that world, and that's when he meets Penelope and everything else along those lines, it that was the only time in the movie, before the plot twist, that was the only time in the movie that I felt that it was... Uh, like, the movie was dragging a little bit, like, it was, like, something else needed to happen, and I understand what they were doing, they were setting up the premise and everything like that, which paid off tremendously, but as they were setting it up, I was kind of like, okay, let's, you know, let's keep going, let's keep going, you know, you know. But let me tell you something, the story between Wreck-It Ralph and Penelope and all the other characters as well, it is just, it, it, it's amazing how good of a story it is. It really is. It's awesome because, I mean, uh, <laughs> you know, let, let's be completely honest. This this movie was made for me and people like me, people who grew up with those old school arcade video games or maybe even didn't play those old school arcade video games but played them on like the anniversary collections or the Midway Arcade Treasures collections. If you know the video games, just regular video games and arcade video games and everything else like that, you're going to pick up on the references and you're just going to have an awesome time with this movie. It is absolutely fantastic. All right, so let's go ahead and wrap this up. This movie totally blew away my expectations. I knew that it was going to be good. Look, like I said before, even if this movie sucked, I was going to end up liking it a little bit because of the video game references and me being a gamer and everything like that. But this movie went beyond that. It went beyond the references and became an incredible movie. I mean, absolutely awesome. The connection between the characters were awesome. The voice acting was fantastic. They did spend a lot of time in the Sugar Rush world, but it actually ended up paying off. You know, they actually spend so much time in the Sugar Rush world that I actually wouldn't be surprised if Disney is making a Sugar Rush game. I Because every single one of the avatars has their own name, the world is completely rendered. I would be very surprised if Disney is not making a Sugar Rush game, and I actually want that to happen, because that would be cool. And the awesome thing about the video game references is that I loved about this movie as well, is that the references were funny, and it made you chuckle, because it made you remember, you know, something from the past or something like that, but the, but the references were never something integral to the part. It was always like, it's there, and you like it because it reminds you of something, but it was never an integral part of the story. And in many ways, I kind of feel like that's the reason why Mario was not in this movie. I get the feeling that if Mario was in this movie, considering how, I mean, let's be honest, when it comes to the video game world, he would be the freaking king of Sheba. 
when it comes to video games, if Mario was in this, he would probably steal the show, and he would probably take the attention away from Wreck-It Ralph, which is not something that I would have liked, because although I, although I came for the references, I stayed for the story. Awesome story, awesome plot twists, awesome acting all together, and oh my gosh, the references were awesome, and it just felt smart, and it felt like it was playing to basic gamer intelligence, and even if you're not a gamer, you will like this movie. You will absolutely love this movie, and when it comes to my rating system, guys, I know that I gave a 5 out of 5 to A Christmas Carol, I gave a 5 out of 5 to Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, but let me tell you right now, this is the easiest 5 out of 5 that I have ever given, given to any movie, ever. Thanks for watching my review, guys, and um, I will see you whenever I make a video. See you guys later.